Hello everyone, I hope you're all well and enjoying the beautiful weather that we're having here in the UK and wherever you're from, I hope you're having a good day. So good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever it is in whatever part of the world. My name's Tracy Evans, in case you've never visited my YouTube channel before, welcome and thank you to all my new subscribers. I've received a couple of messages from new subscribers asking about my Facebook group. So I thought I'd show here. I'm on my app, so I'm on my iPad. And if I just put in Tracy Evans, you can either get me personally, which is Tracy Evans, or you can get my group, which is Tracy Evans, Craft Addicts, Create, Share and Inspire. And inside this group, I've got all my online workshops. So I do online workshops. They're all available. And I think there's around about 45 of them. And inside the group, there's lots of inspiration using my stamps. So it's under Tracy Evans. And if you want to join the group, you're very welcome. So I was asked by a few new subscribers about the group. So if you just go to Facebook, put in Tracy Evans, either my personal profile will show up or the group because I set the group up because my personal profile was getting to the maximum. Uh, I'm only allowed 5,000. So once you reach that level, you've got no more. So I started a group so that we can share ideas using my stamp designs with All and Create. So what I thought I'd do today is we've had a workshop this weekend. I can show you what project we did. So we had a workshop this weekend. So this was the project that we did we created an accordion and this workshop's still available so we created an accordion and it's all still available and then you've got the back as well so this is still available if you'd like to purchase the workshop and we did that this weekend over three days and then what I did was I pulled out some paint because once I'd finished the workshop I thought oh I'll create a project and then I never got round to it because I got sidetracked with gardening so I thought what I'd do today is create a project using the paints I'd pulled out and, and not cry, try and use too many products so what I've got here is I've got my five by seven gel press and it comes in its packaging like so mine's not very clean and what happens is it comes between two pieces of acetate. So I remove the acetate. Now, if you're using a brand new gel press and it's it's sort of not been primed, some of your inks and paint will bead up. It's just what it does naturally until you start using it. If you put it between two pieces of copier paper overnight, it'll then be ready to use. You'll get a little bit of beading up, but it'll be fine. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding my gel press just to my all and create a5 acrylic block i just like to add it to an acrylic block because it means i can use it then like a stamp if i want i can grab hold of it and and it's secure on there it doesn't slide around so that's why i put it on the acrylic block it just works for me now what i want to do is i want to use paints i've got some fresco finish paints and i pulled out aquamarine turquoise and spring I just fancied those colours and I have got white just in case. I've always got white. And then I'm going to use hopefully this stamp set, Enjoy the Journey, stamp set 321. So I've been using this a little bit, but I thought I'd use it a little bit more to give a little bit more inspiration. I may use one of my characters with it as well. So what I've got is I've got the feather stamp. That's what I'm going to use this time. And I've got a spare piece of white card on the side. When I use a gel press, I've always got a spare piece of card on one side, just so that I can just brayer off the excess paint. I'm just going to give my paints a little bit of a, a shake, just to get them moving again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put little bits of the paint. I don't want to add too much paint, she says, as she just drops the blob on there. So this one is aquamarine. Then we've got turquoise that's a little bit darker. So a little bit of turquoise. You really don't need much paint. The, the fresco finish paints dry a little bit quicker on your gel press. So you just need to be aware of that. 
they do dry a little bit quicker than if you were using Dina Wakely or uh, your sort of heavy, heavier bodied paint. But it has its advantages as well when it dries quicker because you can take a second generation print. So I quite like that. So what I've got is I've got my blobs of paint on here and I'm just going to bray the paint. Bray off the excess onto a piece of card, which also looks fantastic. And I just want a little bit more green because there just isn't enough green on there. Just add a little bit of green. Just bray that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp the feather onto the gel press just randomly onto the gel press like so just three times onto the gel press and you could if you wanted So also grab a little bit of the stencil and just place this stencil down. Don't cover this part here, down here, just part of it with your stencil, just so that you've got a couple of circles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a print and I've got a piece of card four and a half inches by six and a half inches. I'm just going to take an initial print, four and a half by six and a half. And if you want, you can turn it over once you've got it like this and you can stamp with it like a stamp. But that's why I like it on the acrylic block. And if you've got dexterity problems, then just give it a rub over with your brayer especially if you struggle with your hands, just use your brayer and hold your brayer, keep your brayer upwards like this so that you don't create any marks on your brayer. So what we've got is in the background, you've got the feathers. Can you see those feathers in the background? Just gives us some texture and we've got those circles in the background as well. But those feathers just give us a little bit of texture. So we'll have that as a background. So that will be our background piece, just so it gives us a little bit of texture. But you can see those in there. They may get covered up a little bit, but that's absolutely fine because we're going to add more feathers. Just going to wipe that paint just off my stamp just because you don't want it to dry too much, just so that it picks up. You, you, if you don't clean your stamp when it's got the paint on, when you come to stamp, it's going to lose some of that detail and you don't want it to lose that detail at all. So just remove some of that paint. It's just a good habit to get into. So what you can do then is you can see if there's anything else on your gel plate. There doesn't look much on there, I must admit. There's hardly anything on there, but let's see if we can get anything. So what we can do, I don't think that's got much white in. So we'll just get another snowflake. And let's just see if we can add a little bit of white paint. Let's see if we can get a print with a second generation. There might not be anything on there, but we can keep, it's worth a try. I never like to waste anything. So just give that a good firm 
press again if you're unsure just use the back of your braid just to lift that then we can see if we've got any background and what you've got is something that's like wallpaper can you see this was off the gel press before so what you can do is you can go around those edges and pick those edges up from your gel press because then you get something that's just like worn wallpaper it's just fab because you don't know quite what you're going to pick up so what you can do is you can add a little bit more white paint just to these corner areas just to pick up these dry bits just so that you get something that's a bit like wallpaper so just go around and just pick up those edge pieces it just looks like wall worn paper so it's just picking up the little bits from the edges of your gel press so it just makes it look a bit like wall worn wallpaper which is what i love so you can keep going round your gel press just to get those edges let's just sit down a bit right so what we've got now is let's move that gel press out of the way and what we've got is we've got these three backgrounds which is just from one little sitting for 15 minutes just with your gel press and I just think those look absolutely brilliant I just think they look fab they just look so good they really do so what we can do now is let's take this piece this piece here and what we're going to do is just highlight some of these circles let's bring them to the foreground so i'm just using a polychromo pencil just to bring these circles to the foreground like so so just go around and you're just making these pop a little bit more And I'm just using polychromo pencils. I don't know whether it says the, the colour on. Let's just stand up, just see if it can see the colour. Just so that you can see that. Cobalt turquoise. Just so you can see what colour I'm using. And then we're just highlighting some of these circles just so they stand out a little bit more. And I can still see that feather detail in the background. So what I'm, down, and what, and what I'm doing is I'm laying down some pigment from the polychromo pencils, just so that the circles are highlighted a little bit more. And you just need to take your time just doing that. I always like the second generation prints as well. The ones that look like worn wallpaper. I just think they look fantastic. So just add that shading. It just makes it pop a little bit more. And it's not like you're in a rush. You don't have to rush the projects. I've pulled my back. I don't know whether it's from garden or something. I can tell the way I'm sitting. So I think that's where we added the circles was at the top half here. And then what I've got is I've got a darker blue, which is cobalt turquoise. And what was that one then? I thought they both said cobalt turquoise. 
it's just so that you can see that they've got different numbers just so that you can see that so really you just need to use a lighter color and a darker color that's all just so they work well together and if you use a nice sharp pencil it often works a lot better i think it does works better for me if i use a sharper pencil and just laying down that pigment now what you would do is if you were at home you would just make sure that you take your time and you don't rush the process that's the only problem is we rush it sometimes and the lighter you can press and add that pigment in layers the better the better the dimension and the better it works now if you haven't got polychromo pencils then use your distress crayons and add some color and just smudge them with your finger you can add color like that so you can do it in different ways just to add color see i'm glad i added that green now because the green really shows really shows up so I'm just going back to the lightest colour just to add some more definition and just to show what you do with distress crayons so there's peacock feathers and evergreen bow so what you do is you just let's go around the darkest circle and you just smudge with your crayon just smudge it round and the crayon works brilliantly actually because you can just scribble and just add a little bit of dimension with your crayon so just scribble a little bit and add a, a bit more dimension with your distress crayon. So this colour is evergreen bow and it's lovely. Just adds that pop of green and it's great. The reason you can smudge it so easily is because you've used that acrylic paint. The acrylic paint gives a layer so it automatically smudges nicely so a bit of peacock feathers a bit of peacock feathers just to add a little bit more pigment so if you find it easier to add it this way then add this way rather than with your pencils I've done a bit of both just because it gives me lovely dimension To each of the circles it just makes them stand out a little bit more and I love how you can easily smudge them let's have a look at that in camera oh yes it stands out nicely in camera those crayons really work those distress crayons right we've got this background here that we created as well so we may as well do something with it hadn't we so let's just grab the paint that we'd got before which is the aquamarine and turquoise and let's take the aquamarine add a little bit of paint and take a little bit of the darker color the turquoise like so and then we can just brayer that out so that you've got two-tone color on your non-stick craft sheet and on your brayer and then you can add that to your stencil and then what you're going to do is you're going to spritz with water spritz your stencil with water and then place that stencil down onto the background now you need to let that paint soak in so press it down 
with your kitchen roll and just give it a gentle rub just press it down just so that you know it makes good contact with that cardstock so just press that down and it gets rid of any excess moisture as well and then we've got our background so let's just place that on one side and let's just clean up a little bit let's clean up some of this mess so we'll just use our wipe just spend a couple of minutes just cleaning everything you can clean this onto another piece of cardstock because it will give you another background so if you've got another piece of cardstock just on one side just wipe it over a piece of card and you'll have another background let's just Just clean up a little bit, it just takes a couple of seconds. Right, what we're going to do then is just bray off the excess paint and then do you remember this background? Well we may as well do something with that background as well. So what we're going to do is add some white paint like so good dollop of white paint let's just move this card out of the way a good dollop of white paint and just add that's not enough just add some white paint you need a good dollop of white paint and add that over your stencil and then give that a good a good spritz with water my stencil's so clean, I can't tell how much white paint I've added because my stencil's so clean. That's only because my husband cleaned it. Not because I cleaned it, my husband did. I left it soaking in Biotex and then my husband gave it a good scrub. Let's just see, there we go. We've now got another background. So it's worth just spending a couple of seconds just creating a couple of backgrounds while you're in the same setting. So let's just give that a clean. Because you don't want all this paint left lying around while you're doing your detailed work. Just give my brayer a little wipe. Again, I can soak that anyway. It's just good to take a few minutes just to give that a wipe. Right, let's have a look what we've got. These are the backgrounds that you've got, okay? Just so you can see exactly what you've got. So you've created the three backgrounds. And what you can do is you can do exactly the same in going round and highlighting. So you can add a little bit of wax crayon and just smudge the wax crayon if you want. It's entirely up to you. You can smudge that. The, the wax crayon looks works beautifully, the distress crayon. So you can take a little bit of the, the blue just to add a little bit more detail. And it really does work well. If you find that you are dragging a little bit with your distress crayon, take a little bit of a baby wipe, dampen your finger, and then it'll work. So just smudge that. Take a little bit of the blue and smudge that. It just highlights it a little bit more. And if you start with the blue, you get more blue. If you start with the green, you get that green tinge. So it's entirely up to you how you add that. So if my hand starts to drag, because there's only a little bit of acrylic paint on this one, then just dampen your hand 
just with a baby wipe. Just think that background is just gorgeous. And I'll probably create a card with this, this background another day. Um, but it's important that you see how I just make the background pop a little more a little bit more so this one is evergreen bow i get confused which one's which so i'm just adding little bits of color and don't let's forget these little circles here you can just blend those as well give those a little bit of color and as i say if it starts dragging then just use your baby wipe so just remember those little circles as well. Take a little bit of the blue. Find this therapeutic doing the, the crayons. But as you can see, that just adds a little bit of depth. So you've got depth in both of them. So I'll create a card with that and I'll show that on Facebook. Just so that you can see that. I will show a card with that eventually. And then exactly the same with these circles that you've done in white. So just give them a smudge, wipe your hand with a little bit of the baby wipe if it drags a little bit, just so that it, you can blend it out. So do exactly the same. Again, with the Distress Cranes. just gives you several backgrounds and this was just the wipe off the wipe off from the um brayer so it's great because it's you've you've not had to do anything it's like a free background so it's fabulous so just take what oh i keep forgetting the colors evergreen bow Just add a little bit of green to there. So what you'll do is you'll go round and you'll do this with all your three backgrounds. And if nothing else, if you don't create anything else, you've created three backgrounds. So just go around and just take your time adding those circles just adding them back in again. So you just need to take your time just to create those. So there's your three backgrounds. So you've used your backgrounds, all of them, and you can create different cards. And if you're not happy with the depth, just go round with a little bit more pencil crayon and bring those in. You see, what I will do later is I will spend a bit of time defining these circles with my pencil crayons just to make them pop even more but if you see I've got all these backgrounds now I can create cards with so that gives you three backgrounds and then what I'm going to do is create something with these with this background so what I'm going to do is just look in my drawer and decide which colour Versafine Claire I don't know how many blues that I've got. There's, there's different blues. That one might be a bit too. So what I tend to do is I grab a piece of scrap card. Well, instantly I know that's not going to be the right blue because that's like a, a marine blue. What's this one, Mike? That one's a better blue. So we're going to use that one. So that is Warm Breeze. And we're going to use a little bit of the morning mist just to dull that blue down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the feather stamp. So I'm going to ink it up because in all the other projects we've ink, we've done the feather in brown or black. It doesn't always have to be in those colours, not at all. And just tone the blue down a little bit with a touch of the grey. 
with the morning mist. That's morning mist. So what I'm going to do is just add that over there. Just allowing that ink to sit, because it's a good idea, whatever ink you're using, just to give that time to sit on there. You can lift these acrylic blocks should you wish. If you wish to lift them, you can lift them. So I'm just happy with that. So as you can see, it's stamped onto the background. Now, what you have to remember is you've stamped onto an acrylic paint background. So let me just show you. You can see there's a little bit of shine to it. There you go. You can see there's a little bit of shine to that ink. What that means is that you've stamped onto a non-porous surface. So because you've stamped onto a non-porous surface, you either need to dry with the heat tool or you need to blot, just so that you can see how much ink is removed. You do need to blot that. So just take your time just to blot that ink. See how much ink you get off there. It really is worth it, just taking the time. There we go. Just to make sure that that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my hibiscus stamp set, this border stamp here, just to extend it a little bit more. But just let me lift that up, just so that you can see the detail. And I can still see a little bit of shininess, shy, shy, a little bit of shininess on that card. Just to make sure I blot it, there we go. But it's just a lovely background. Just love that background. Really lovely. So what I'm going to do is move that feather. You could even, if you wanted, stamp another feather here if you wanted on the side. So what I'm going to do, just going to remove that feather. And then we're going to use this stamp set so what you can do is grab your stamp set and decide where des decide where you want to stamp. I know exactly now because you can use the acetate and the acetate gives you an idea where everything's going. It really does work. And what I want to do this time is I want to stamp in the black. Black Nocturne ink is what I'm going to stamp in. So we'll just sit down a little bit. I seem to stand, sit, stand, sit. So just ink that up. Give it a really good inking. I don't quite want the acrylic block inked. And then let's bring this into camera. And then you can hover over where you want to stamp. So I want to stamp here like this. There we go. Just stamp that there. And I'm just allowing that ink to sit on the background. Because we've had those layers of paint, I've actually added more layers of paint to my hands than I have to the card. But because we've added those layers of paint, it needs time just to soak in. Even though it's non-porous, it's still got to sort of rest on that surface just so that some of that ink is absorbed in. And we're using this as a background stamp, so that's absolutely fine. Just lift that up. Just look at that. Just beautiful. And again, because you've stamped onto that background, you need to make sure... You just need to make sure that you give it a dry. 
So take your time and give that a dry. So you dry it with your heat tool or your blot, but you've got to do one or the other. If you want to save on drying because you don't want to use your heat tool, then you can just blot. But it is important that you take that time. And you can give it a dry as well. But I'm just thinking he would sit perfectly on there. Can you see on the edge of the... Let me just lift. Let me just lift this up. Just on the edge of the line where it says craft. So he sits perfectly on there. So what I'm going to do now, as I can't pick the paper doll up, is I'm just going to lean on my copy of paper. And what I'm going to do is just highlight these circles a little bit more, like I've done before, just with my polychromo pencils. Just give them a little bit more of a highlight. So just take your time. And you, it will feel a little bit scratchy because you've got that acrylic paint layers on there. So it's automatic that it'll feel a little bit scratchy. So just take your time. Just to add the little, little bits of colour. I'm going to take my darker colour. If you're going to use the Distress Crayons to add the shading because you haven't got polychromos or you haven't got coloured pencils, you've got to make sure that that ink is dry because it will smudge. So you don't want that. So just make sure it's dry. So just take your time in that. Just give it a little bit more. As I say, when you're not doing a video, then you'll find that you'll you'll crayon like this for ages just to give it its depth because it's it's enjoyable and it's enjoyable to see the depth come into life. Like so. I can I'll just lift that up just so that you can see. Just so that you can see that's coming to life. And if we want, we can add a little bit more stamping. So what we can do is find your stamp, Tracy. So decide what little bit you want, which is those circles. So what you don't want is you don't want the alphabet. So I can either wipe the stamp or I can just put some copy of paper. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of that ink, again black, just to extend that collage. Just make sure you've got plenty of ink on there. And what I can do is just use that, just extend that collage a little bit. Just so it's going a little bit further up the card. You don't have to extend it if you don't wish, but I quite like extending the collage. And you can hear it sort of suction on the project. You can hear the suction. So you just want to make sure that you don't you don't forget to blot. That's what you do need to make sure you do because it's really wet on there. So you just need to give that a couple of blots. Just blot it. Can you see all the ink I've got off? Because you're working on that acrylic paint surface. As I say, you can just dry with your heat tool. 
Your heat tool will be quicker, but you need to dry from both front and back. But I'm just proving that you can do things even without a heat tool. It doesn't have to have a heat tool. And I've got the cleaner. Not everybody's got heat tools either. So what I'm going to do is just add some more of the shading just to this card. Just to those circles. Again, if you're going to use your distress crayons, you're going to have to blot like this lots more. You can't get away with not blotting and trying to use those distress crayons. So you'll probably need to use your heat tool. Just get a little bit of that darker colour. It's so much easier working with a sharper pencil. You'll find it a lot easier. Because it really gets into those little, little areas. And what you do as a demonstrator is when you start colouring, you start going quiet. It's just automatic. You're so engrossed in the colouring bit. Go back to your lightest colour just to blend those out. You can use Zest It to blend your colours out if you wish to. I just tend to blend colour to colour. But you can use Zest It and a paper stump. And then you can do it that way just to blend it. Just so that you know there are other ways of blending as well. Just, just so that you can see that and if you think let me just see my little man is going to go on here no I can't pick it up like so so my little man is going on there and we haven't quite finished yet so what we're going to do take our little man off and then I just want to take my numerator stamp. Do I want the numerator or do I want to extend this a little bit further? Like so. Mm, no, I'm not, I'm not going to use my numerator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the stamp off the acrylic block. And what I'm going to do is ink up this alphabet part like so and what I'm going to do is put a little bit of the alphabet down the side like so that's how it's going just sit in there oh yes so then I just need my butterfly so we just need to block that so we've added that stamping again. Move my little paper doll. I have got more, look at the state of my hands. I've got more paint on me than there is on the actual card. And the only reason you're doing this is because you've worked on that painted surface. Therefore, it's non-absorbent anymore. Right, so what I'm going to do now is grab my stamp set through the meadows. And I want this butterfly here. So we'll just grab that. And we're going to have this butterfly so we need a scrap piece of card like so and we're going to stamp the butterfly in black so this is the stamp set through the meadows 449 just give that a really good inking Like so. 
Don't ask me why I've stamped right in the middle of the white card when you could stamp at the edge. I'm just using it without an acrylic block because I'm winging it. But you use your acrylic block if you feel better with your acrylic block. There's our butterfly, fantastic. But that in itself, if you imagine that stamped like that with a little single flower here, there's another card. So it works brilliantly. I just get in, even though this doesn't need blotting, it's just automatic that I get into good habits and I just give it a blot anyway. It's just what I do. So what I'm going to do is we're going to give this a little bit of colour before we cut it out with the polychromos. Just give that a little bit of colour. Doesn't need much colour, but we'll just give it a little bit of colour. Using the same pencils. Just a little bit of the lighter colour and then we want some of that darker colour. And when your pencil is sharper, you will see that you can lay down that pigment a lot easier with a sharp pencil. Works a lot easier for me. And what you do is you layer, you layer those colours. Just to create more vibrancy, more depth and more layer. You just take your time. And I would spend a lot longer colouring my butterfly than I do here. Just so that it's got more depth. So just working with those two colours just so that it colour, it matches everything else we've done in the background. Just giving it a little bit of depth with the darker colour. So there we go. So what we'll do now is we'll cut out our butterfly. thing is now you've also got three other backgrounds that you can use to create either complementary cards or different cards and you can use them throughout the week on different projects and I always tend to turn the card rather than my scissors, it's the card that moves. Beautiful butterfly. Well, there's definitely more blue paint on me than there is on the card. It's glorious out today here in the UK. Really lovely. There we go. So just take this because what I'm going to do is add my little man here like so. Sit on there please. And then my butterfly is going to go here like this. And if you look at it in camera, you can always get a different perspective. So it's quite nice looking at it in camera. We just stick our little man down. Like so. Onto there. Like 
like so. Stick our butterfly. Let's just have him up there. Like so. And what I want to do is I just want to add a little bit, just a touch of the alphabet from this hibiscus stamp set. Just a little touch. Just here. Just so that it balances it out. So I've just given it a little touch of the alphabet there. Just gives it a little bit of balance. And we're just going to block that. Like so. Just make sure that that doesn't, we don't want any smudges after we've gone all this far. And it just looks fab like that. Just going to add him to my black card before I add index clips or anything like that. So just add this to the black card, just because if I add anything else bulky or anything like that, then it's added to the black mat. The black mat always makes it pop. Just pick that up because you can mess around with it a little bit better. Like so. So what I'm going to do then is just add a little bit of shading just where his foot is, just so that he doesn't look like he's floating into midair, like so. And then we can just add a little bit of shading just around, just around him just so that we can make him pop a little bit more. So I'm just using a grey ink tense pencil. If you don't have a grey ink tense pencil, then just use your grey oxide ink or use a HB pencil and smudge it out with a paper stump just so that you've got different ways of, of adding the shading. Just just makes him pop a little bit. Just against the background. There we go. He just pops a little bit. Just wipe that up so that we don't place that everywhere. And then what I want to do is just add some white splatters. Just to our card. So just bear with me while I get a little embellishment. So I've got these little magnifying glasses. We're going to use one of them. These were just, I think they were pink craft charms or pink pig charms or something like that um, and I just think a little magnifying glass will add to it because he's going he's going on a search to look for butterflies so I just think that will look nice and they actually do magnify so I quite like that so just add the magnifying glass like so Just make, you need a little bit of glue to seep around the edge just so that that grabs hold. Just so that it grabs a hold of that. And then what I'm going to do is just grab an index clip for the top here. Just grab that index clip for there. 
And then I'm just going to grab a clean piece of copier paper. Just because I like to lay my cards on a clean piece of copier paper when I'm putting them onto a clean card. So I've got that. And then if you want to add this to a white card blank, I can't do mine at the moment because I need those metal embellishments just to dry. But just so that you can see, this is our card. And I'm so chuffed with it. Just think it looks fab with that feather in the background. I can still see bits of the feather here in the background. I can see all the circles in the background. I'm just so pleased with that. Just so that you can see all the detail. And if I place that down there, you can see the card. And I'm just really pleased with how that's turned out. And what you would do is you would just add an insert by just stamping the feather in the background in the insert. So I hope you enjoyed the card. I hope you try it out. And if you tag me on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, uh, I'd love to see your makes. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.